Today we're going to calibrate the 9000 series cart with the X35. To start with, we're going to want to set up the monitor before we go out and actually do anything on the tank. We'll jump into the monitor. With this, we'll have to bring out the tanks that we want to calibrate and make sure that the products are set up in each one of the tanks that we're calibrating. Nice thing with the Virgo machine is you can calibrate all the tanks at once if you want. So today we've got product in tank number one, so we're going to set up that tank. So we're just going to touch on tank one, bring it out to the middle of the page, and then we're going to find, it'll either say select product or the last product that you had in the tank. We're going to want to touch that button. Now we can put the product that we're calibrating into the tank. So for today, we're going to put in a product name, touch the product name, and then we're going to go down and find the product that we are going to calibrate. For today, we're going to do floor dry. To do this, we're just press OK, and now it'll put floor dry into the tank. We actually have floor dry in the tank, and we're going to show you that you can actually calibrate any product, and it doesn't matter what the name of it is. All we're really looking for is the calibration factor on the bottom. So to start with, your product name, below that you have your rain increment. So you can enter it now or if you have built your products prior to seeding or from years past you may have that in there so we'll just touch on it and we'll put a rain increment of five pounds press ok and then we're going to want to make sure that we have a preset rate one and two in there as well so we'll just touch on preset one we'll calibrate floor dry at 90 pounds and then a preset rate two Maybe we'll put 100 pounds in there. Then right below there you'll have your product density. So the product density, what that does is it tells the monitor how much physical product you can actually fit in that tank. So if you want, you can figure out what your product densities are if you don't already have them. Grab one of your white pails and your digital scale. Fill this pail right full, level to the top, and this is 1.04 of a cubic foot. So now we can weigh it get our weight, cal or calculate that zero four off, and now we have pounds per cubic feet. Then you can go ahead and you can enter that into the monitor so it's on that product for good. And then below that you have your cal factor. That cal factor is in pounds per revolution, and what we're trying to figure out is how many pounds that metering auger puts out for one revolution. If it's set to zero, you need to put something in there to get the meters to start. At zero, the meters don't know what to spin to, so they won't even turn on. Touch on the cal factor, and depending on what you have for metering augers, we have a starting point for you. So if you have a low output, put a starting point of 0.1. Double flight, 0.2. Single flight, 0.3. And high output, 0.4. Those are only starting points. We'll calibrate it once and then we'll have to verify to make sure that new cal factor is right. Hit manual entry. It's in there and it has 0.2. And now what we can do is we can press OK. It'll ask you, if you want to set your preset rate one as the requested rate. Press yes, it'll set it to 90 pounds. Now what we can do is we can get ready to calibrate. So we want to touch on the gear and wrench. Brings out your configuration tab. You'll want to set a manual speed in there if it's set to zero. Set it to a seat that you consistently speed at. Seat at. So just touch on it. Put in whatever it is. Today we're going to do five mile an hour. And then now we can go into multi-tank calibration. Touch on multi-tank calibration and we're going to go down to automatic tank calibration. And now it steps us into the calibration wizard. If you read the direction, it says you're doing a granular calibration. Just press next to begin. Once we press next, our monitor is set up and ready to go for the calibration. Now all we have to do before we leave the tractor cab is turn on our fan number one. Now at the back of the tank, you're going to want to find one of your two CarTech remotes and you're going to want to turn on your conveyor power because we're going to want to turn those fans off and we're going to want to put it into the fill, fill cal state. So to do that with your conveyor run switch on, 
the bottom corner, you'll see the fill, fill cowl button. When you press it once, what it'll do is it'll put all your hydraulic oil into the fill mold so you can use your conveyor. You hit it that second time, it puts oil to your conveyor, also opening up hydraulic oil to your metering circuit. So once it's in fill cowl mode, we're good to go there. Also find your digital scale with the scale that's sent with the 9,000 part, it'll hold a tear weight for you. So turn the scale on, find one of your pails or whatever you're using to calibrate with, hang it on there, and then to get a tear weight into it, just push and hold the on zero button for about five to 10 seconds. Once you hold it for that five to 10 seconds, let go, and it should show zeros on there and then when you take the pail off it should show you the weight of the pail and the, what it has in there as a tear weight. Once we have the scale ready to go, hydraulics are good. Now we just need to crawl underneath and take out our downspout out of the airstream and put it into the calibration spout and then throw one of our pails underneath. Once the pail's underneath, because this is a new product, we're going to want to charge that auger because there's no product in that metering auger so we'll get false revolutions that'll put our cal factor out in our monitor. So to charge our augers, we'll go to our keypad, we'll find the tank that we have products in that we want to charge. So today it's tank number one. Turn tank number one on, it's sitting in standby, flashing at you, waiting for you to press the play button. We hit the play button, once we get a consistent stream of product coming out of the metering auger, we can stop it. But you'll notice if you were to run back to your monitor, it'll show on your monitor that you have revolutions in an estimated weight. We don't want to use that because we had revolutions with no product in it, so we'll want to zero that. So we're going to find the button on the bottom, this zero, or preload button, pull it until you see the green light. When you see the green light, what it does is it's activated the X35 to zeros again. Now we got to switch out our pail, because we don't want to use this product. Put a fresh pail underneath, and now we can go ahead and we can run our sample out. So we'll just hit the play button, and we'll run our samples out. If you're doing a multi-tank calibration, and one pail fills up faster than the other, just turn off your corresponding switch to that tank. We want to do two-thirds of a pail. The larger the sample size, the more accurate our cal factor is going to be. Once we have our sample size that we want, we'll just hit the play button. Now we can turn on our scale and grab our sample. And we can go ahead and we, we can weigh our sample. Weigh our sample, 11 pounds. So now what we can do is we can take that 11 pounds back to the tractor and enter it into the monitor. So now going back into our monitor, you'll notice that we have our revolutions and our estimated weight for the tank that we calibrated, which is tank number one. Now we'll just have to press next to go to the next screen. And now you'll notice the tank that we did get at our estimated weight will actually be grayed out and now we can actually put our number in there that we got from our scale which is 11 pounds. Press OK. Once we get all our weights put in there then we can press the next button again. And then on this screen what it'll show you for each tank is your old cal factor, your new cal factor and the percent difference between the two. You'll notice that our old cal factor is 0.3, but our new cal factor is 0.83. So our difference is 71% out. You gotta remember, we made a, a product in the tank that it's never used before, and we put a starting cal factor in there for that metering auger. So now what we wanna do, because we know we didn't do anything wrong with our calibration, we're gonna wanna save that cal factor and once we save the ones that we want, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna press the OK button. Once we press the OK button, now we can go back in and we can actually recalibrate to make sure 
that our, and verify that our cal factor that we just got is what we want to use for when we go seeding. So now we can go back to the back of the tank and we can run another sample out. But you'll notice that I didn't put it in calibration on the monitor. I'm going to come out here and we can actually put it in calibration on the side of the cart. The only thing here is you're going to have to make sure that you have the right products in each one of the tanks when you go to calibrate or you may get numbers that you don't want to use. We know our tank is set up, so we're going to push it, let go our button A until it's green. Now we're ready to calibrate. If you look back on our monitor, our monitor is set into the calibration mode. We don't have to charge the augers because those augers are already charged. Now we just have to find one of our pails again. Throw it underneath. And then run our sample out again. So we'll turn on the tank that we want. Press the play button. You'll notice it's changed the RPM of that metering auger because it's judging for what we want for product out of the tank. Once we get our sample size that we want, we can hit that play button to stop it. Grab our sample. Turn on our scale. turned on, it shows our tear weight, we can weigh our sample again, this time we got 18.1, so now what we can do is we can go ahead and take that sample weight that we just got back to the tractor and enter that back into the monitor. So again we are to calibrate, we're going to have to press next, we'll enter in our weight. And then you'll see, once we have our weight in there, you'll see our old cal factor, our new cal factor, and the percent difference between the two. So our percent difference right now is 1.43%, which is close enough, but I want to save that because that's a new cal factor, so I'm going to hit the save button. Once it's saved, now it's encrypted onto that product we go ahead and we can press OK. Now we have that product calibrated. You're going to have to come back to the tank, clean up a few things, remembering to put our downspout that's in that calibration spout back into the airstream, or you're going to have a mess of a strip going down the field. And then the last thing before we leave the side of the cart is we want to turn off our conveyor run switch, which will turn our fans back on. And now we're good to go.